So I hadn't really thought about what we should do for, for the satsang too much. Um, I thought that maybe I would take some questions if anyone has any questions. If not, then we've got to go to plan B, which, you know, hopefully, you know, it will come to me. We don't have questions. Um, I have one. <clears throat> Something that uh, comes up when I'm talking to students and to, um, is talking about the ego. And I think Patanjali addresses this, this ego, this, um, this protection mechanism. The ego, I think in, the, in Western society, we have this idea that it's bad, that it's this bad thing, it's this thing that needs to be overcome. But in some sense, isn't it necessary for us to cope with the world around us and then take control of it later? Well, the, the ego in, in Sanskrit we would call ahamkara. Mm -hmm. And so this means simply aham is like I am. Mm -hmm. Kara means a maker. Mm -hmm. so, so what this is meaning is that the ego is this consciousness within us that makes the I, the separate self. Mm -hmm. I am is made by the ego. Mm -hmm. In reality, there is no I and there is no you. It is the same. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important for people to start to understand this uh, expanded self in which there is no distinction between me and you. It's important first to accept the ahamkara, the ego self. As people start to, to meditate and they start to examine who they are, they come first to all these very negative motion, emotions in the, the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of the ahamkara, the ego. Mm -hmm. We may say, I am too stupid to do this, to achieve this. Mm -hmm. or I don't have the confidence, or I don't have the willpower to do what I want to do. And that maybe comes from a past experience. Maybe, um, maybe in our childhood someone had said something to us. Mm -hmm. It was very upsetting. And so if we attach to that, and we allow that to affect our beliefs, then we will become that. We'll start acting stupid. We'll act like we lack the willpower. And so it's important first, before we can see who we are beyond this limited experience that we face these negative feelings and thoughts within ourselves. It's, it's very important to face all of those things. You've got to accept the world. And in that way you master the world before then you can transcend the world and start to master the spiritual realm. You know, the God is beyond the world. Your high self is beyond the world, but you you start to realize that only as you accept the world and master the things in the world. If you have a desire for anything in life, it's good to, to face that desire within yourself. And if it's a good desire, sure, you know, maybe the ideal is that you're satisfied with whatever is going on around you. But if you're not satisfied with your job, if you're not satisfied with these simple aspects of your life, you've got to learn to be satisfied. And sometimes it requires that you work hard and go to school and uh, take some classes, get a degree, get a better job before you can find satisfaction in the world. Um, and so in that way, our, our ego, the desires within us, the feelings within us are like a map. It tells us what our spiritual practice is, what our dharma is. We've got to follow our path to God. And if in the past lives maybe we had been depending too many times on our husband for supporting us, we may have to work to show ourselves that we can do that. Mm -hmm. And so doing things in the world is extremely important for people on a spiritual path. They think, a lot of people, they think very wrongly that as you do spiritual practice, you get more and more out of the world. And that you get more and more still and somber. 
Like, a, like a, you imagine, you know, you're imagining stern priests and nuns and swamis sitting. <laughs> but it's not true. It's just life is more and more fun every day as you continue to face the things within yourself and you continue to make your life happier by participating and observing it and seeing that every day is a blessing from God. It just gets easier. It just gets more fun. And so the issue of needing to run away disappears. And at that point you're in a position where if you're choosing to do a spiritual practice, it's very easy to transcend. It's difficult to meditate if your mind is full of negative thoughts and emotions. You sit and you just feel the negative thoughts and negative emotions. But when your heart is full of love and you're feeling happiness and contentment, you don't even have to sit. Meditation just starts to happen. They have lesser states of samadhi that they talk about when people are doing something they really enjoy, like when they're dancing, when they're painting, many artists, or when they're playing their instrument. Many artists enter into this um, transcendental sort of state where they're not aware of the things around them, and that's because they're enjoying life very much, and they are deeply, deeply, deeply in their experience. Mm -hmm. And so in that sense, yoga is really the practice of getting ourselves to appreciate life in every moment for exactly what it is. The mind will tell us it's bad, but it's all good. Even when low-minded people do bad things to us, from the perspective of the high self, this is a blessing designed to help us recognize our attachments and faults so we can work on them, free ourselves from them, transcend those attachments and be happier and be freer. The other day, just the other day, it was very funny. I was driving. I was driving my wife to the uh, Ayurveda class she's taking. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're going, she had gotten some directions, you know, and uh, I, I should have gotten the directions, I think. <laughs> she had been there before, right? You know. Uh, but uh, I had not been there before and I didn't know where we were going and we get on the toll road and I knew we were going toward the toll road so I asked her did you bring any quarters or anything and she she said oh yeah I'll bring it I'll bring it I'll bring it but she didn't bring it so we're going through my bag bag right here we're looking in the bottom of it for any kind of change <laughs> we can find we went through about four tolls before finally we're asking someone where do we go and they said oh you shouldn't have come through the first toll <laughs> and so we turn around and we're going through the tolls again and at this point you know uh, I start thinking oh well you know these, these toll people they're so rude you know these toll people we can get rid of our pennies Let's, no one wants these pennies you know but they're asking for all the change they're trying to take our change let's, <laughs> let's give them let's pay them the whole toll in pennies <laughs> You know, so for our last toll, you know, we, we give this woman like 75 pennies. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, you know, finally we make it to the class and I drop off my wife and I come back to the place. You know, to the one last toll I have to, have to pay before I'm then heading back to my place, to the, the temple I'm keeping now. And so, uh... My toll is 70 cents and I get three quarters, 75 cents. And I give the woman at the toll 75 cents. And in that moment, I saw my guru and I felt a lot of spiritual energy and she gives me this smile and she gives me five pennies. <laughs> <laughs> and I just laughed and laughed and laughed and I knew that that's my guru saying, hey, everyone deserves the best. Don't give anyone the bad thing. Mm. Don't try to get rid of what is bad because it's been given to you for a good reason. It's a blessing. And, and I felt that and I knew that my karma was coming back immediately. <laughs> it, was a good, it was a very powerful reminder to me. Don't ever try to get rid of your penance. For some reason you haven't. Mm. 
You know, the other people, you, you can't hurt anyone else. You know? If it's their karmas, maybe they'll suffer. And if you want to, to be a part of that suffering, you can be, but you don't have to help anyone get punished. Because what people put out will come back to them. It's not our job to try to make people suffer. Unless we want to have a part in that suffering. It's our job to help everyone, to bless everyone that we ever see. Uh, that can be difficult sometimes, but if we do that, we'll be very happy and we'll start to see that we're always getting blessings from the people around us. And to me, that was a great blessing. It was a reminder. <coughs> a reminder that God is there watching me and that I need to watch myself. So it was a great blessing. <laughs> <laughs>